Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And we have the great Jeff Darrow in the house today, man, to continue celebrating uh, Neil Adams, looking at some of the quintessential work from the man himself, man. Uh, the the three, four issue uh, Raz Al Ghul story that he did that's in the uh, the Batman Treasury Edition C51 uh, for, for those playing at home. Before we get into things, I want to invite you guys to like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new vids are available. And if you watch these videos to the very end, uh, that helps push our videos out to other comic book loving YouTube uh, viewers, helps us grow our numbers, man. We recently hit 60,000 subscribers. We're looking for 600,000, so help us on that track. Uh, Jeff, uh, did you encounter this work in a regular mon monthly format or uh, this big treasury book? Oh, no, no, I bought them when they came out. You know, I was, I was always, I mean, looking for the Neil Adams Batman stuff. And it was one of those deals where, you know, he'd do a lot of covers and I'd go, oh, and I'd open her up. And, I, you know, I'd, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, you know, nothing against them. It was just like, but, you know, I'd always pray that, and it would always be some odd one to go, that would come out and go, eh, I'm going to, I'll open it up. But, oh, he actually did do it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like that uh that inhumans story oh yeah so yeah he's doing the inhumans backups and uh, I mean, anything that guy did i mean i think if I, any i wanted to see him draw every superhero that ever was i mean i, I was a, it just he had to and it just made i don't even though it was like the b-list guy he would turn him an a-list guy because like yeah he's he's Having e e Neil Adams draw one of your characters is a validation, I always thought, because it was just, man, he'd turn him into these elegant, sophisticated characters and give them weight and reality. And, and, Jeff, watching him... Out with Dead Man. Dead Man, I think, was the... Or no, uh, the Spectre was the first time I noticed him. Yeah. Following him, like, as his books are releasing, did he feel different than everybody else? Was he, like, this superstar artist? Because when I started reading, I'd follow artists. And what you described of, like, oh, Neil Adams, draw every superhero. That's how I would feel when it'd be, like, whatever artist I liked, it'd be, like, I wish they would draw, you know, Spider-Man or Wolverine or Hulk or whatever character because I wanted to see their version. It felt like Neil Adams, he wasn't a house guy. Like, he was a superstar artist where it was, like, he looks like Neil Adams. He doesn't look like DC style or Marvel style. Was it, is that how that felt when you found yeah, his well, work? I was curious. Well, I always kind of figured and looking at it was that his stuff was so complicated and so well drawn that it must've taken him a lot of time to do it. So he couldn't actually do that many monthly books. So I always thought the people were like at his door, like knocking, would you please do me an issue of the Avenger? <laughs> do me an issue of the X-Men, please. Please, Mr. Adams, oh, you know, and I, and I think I knew at the time he was doing commercial art or maybe he wasn't, but which is probably, you know, because I was did some commercial art and it was probably paying more at the time. So I was like, how do they manage to talk him into doing the X-Men? I was thinking, holy jeez, because I mean, at that point, the X-Men were just, you know, it was like, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was just, and to me, everyone he would do, it was, it was, an, it was an event to get him to do a comic. And I, I always wondered what they paid him or what they, you know, they, how they convinced him to, to do even more, more than one issue. Because otherwise, because as a kid, when I first saw it, I thought, why isn't he just drawing Batman all the time? Because it's, or Superman, because it's just so cool. It's the best. Anybody, I wouldn't want to follow him at all. Right. <laughs> How about this back, this cover, the background? Uh, I'm, I'm staring close and I feel like it, it starts off black and the lines are white. Does that make sense to you? I think this is a texture. Like what we see yeah. is is that like black and you know the white line look. I think that's probably some sort of texture that he then just goes in and draws on top of and then cuts out almost like a screen tone or, or something to put like the clean traditional pen and ink art in front of it. That's my guess. Yeah. Hmm. Cuz yeah. I can't imagine generating this kind of texture yourself. You know, it's, uh, it's so organic. It is, but it's also very consistent. Yeah. And but when the, you look close, it's fine lines that he's drawing with. Yeah. So it's a, and that figure of Robin in the foreground, it's just so hard to draw and make it look interesting or not look funky. Yeah, having everything where it should be. Good luck. 
I'm glad you said that, Jeff, because we often comment on how hard it is to draw like a prone figure. Oh, man. <laughs> and I'm sure if you're at home and you're not an artist, you're like, what are you talking about? But no, it's, not it's, easy. It's, it's an odd <laughs> angle. You're, you're drawing the characters in, in a perspective you've never not seen them. This neck has to be connected somewhere here. Yeah. Like you always yeah, talk about drawing through. Yeah, and you're talking about the neck. That's that's where a drawing will often fall apart, that kind of position, because it'll look like, actually, it looks like it's growing, the head's coming out of the shoulder. That, it's firmly placed in the, uh, you know, the, the vertebrae and it, above the collarbone. It isn't floating above the shoulder or or it's further back from the, towards the other shoulder. You just, man. And even that, look at the crotch. I mean, I had to point it out, but <laughs> my God, you know. He doesn't have, he doesn't have the Burt Ward uh, Burt Ward look to it, but uh, <laughs> it's prominent. Uh, yeah, this ain't your uh, yeah. this ain't your camp comics, and and it starts off on page one. Like very often, that cover will get torn off or whatever. So so page one has to be a de facto splash. It's a pretty yeah. effective shot. Yep. Silhouette and just that body language of just lumbering into that into that window that pose pretty sick also pretty scary like this yeah. does not look like uh your 60s tv show batman kind of well, well that, that's what when i was a kid i mean i bought like a, he saved batman you know, yeah he brought him, you know because he was you know and as a kid i watched batman because it was like the only thing there was but i knew they were making fun of him and it bothered me and but then it's like wow he brought him back he brought him back from the and that the dc allowed him because because i mean you know, i think they that that show helped them a lot, but uh, man, he, he really saved Batman. He wouldn't have other people have said it. He wouldn't have Frank Miller's Batman or, or Alan Moore's Batman if he hadn't rescued this character. Was there given him dignity and elegance? Was there a, pers- uh, a, a specific inker who was your favorite over top of uh, Neil Adams? I, I was thinking of Dick Giordano. Um, Although I, you know, I, the stuff, there was someone at Marvel, I can't think that I thought smoothed him out too much. I can't think of a little later. Tom Palmer? Maybe. Because I can't imagine him need, need much help. You know, his stuff is all right there. Because uh, I was thinking of what we mentioned before. Like, John Severin was a guy. John Severin could make everybody look good, like Kevin Nolan, you know. Uh, but there's certain artists that you know just they don't need any help. I like that he doesn't have eyebrows. Yeah. yeah, it's it's one of the cool little design. I, who thinks of that? But it looks really cool. Yeah. Reading this story, uh, this Ra's al Ghul guy is he's he's kind of Batman in a way. He's a rich dude who mm-hmm. is a detective. He discovers that Bruce Wayne's. Uh, Bruce Wayne is Batman just by simple deduction of like who can who can afford a Batmobile and Batarangs. <laughs> See, I'll tell you the truth, I don't think I even read these. I just looked at the pictures. <laughs> that, you know, just as well because because it reads like a, like a typical comic in, in certain ways. Uh, it's it's the aesthetics and it's the arrangement of panels w- that it really sings. And what's cool is with this treasury, there there are four issues of comics in here. And one of them is by uh, Irv no- no- Novak or whatever. So, yeah. so you get to see kind of where Batman was. And it's not yeah. bad work, but it's it's more staid and chill. Well, I, I have to tell you, that was a thing. And I don't, I don't mean to put down Mr. Uh, Novak, but there'd be a Neil Adams cover and open up and it'd be, oh, uh, it's not and he, and he used And he, was, he used the cape. The cape became a part of his identity as opposed to, you know, uh, something that you're wearing because he's going out to the going out to the opera in you know 18th century Paris. It was like, it was a living thing, and it it was cool. It wasn't funky. It was it was just. And originally it was like that, and it just just turned into just part of a costume as a, as opposed to a part of of his being and his. Uh, I love how the cow's all black. Yeah, that's that's really cool. And I wonder as we go through this, how much influence he had on the coloring? Because this feels like atypical coloring. To sure. Me. I love how that looks, but it makes me think like that's just not what comic books looked like usually. This green is a green that you see like in Neil Adams comics and like nowhere else. You yes. know, and certainly not in the DC comics of the time. Uh, I love seeing him 
do take take the germ of that Bob Kane stuff. Mm-hmm. I was thinking the same thing and turned it into his own deal. That's such a funky drawing, but 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 Adams is like, I want to saved it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, did you know Neil Adams? You know, I'll tell you a story. I yeah, I I, I just a little bit, but I um when I. I I just got out of art school and there was an artist that I knew, uh, his name is Doug Rice and he used to do, didn't work for First Comics, he did uh, Dynamo Joe, I think it was in the back of yes. Grimjack. But we were friends and he went to New York and uh, he went to Continuity and I, I thought if he's looking for work or not but, and, and God bless him, he, uh, he showed Neil Adams my artwork and when he came back he called and said, you know, I was at continuity and I showed my stuff, your stuff to Neil Adams. And he said he had a place for you if you'd come to New York. And I was like, holy cow. I mean, I was like, you know, holy Jesus. I was just so happy. And I was like, my God, it's like a, a, a dream. And I called up one of my best friends and I told him about it. And he said to me, um, I don't think you're ready. And it just killed me. It killed my, and I never went. I never contacted him because I thought, because I respected this guy so much. And I said, if he thinks I'm not ready, then and I, did, I, I never took advantage of it. It could be just as well, man. You could have been one of the crusty Bunkers Inkers or something. <laughs> maybe, man. maybe. But it, it, just, it just really killed, it just killed my spirit. But I met him, I met him a few times later, uh, one time through Mobius, and it was kind of a funny story, but. And then another time he came to see me because he told me that his son was a big fan and he wanted me to do a drawing. And I ran into him a couple of times and uh, he never remembered me. But once he he knew who I was, when he heard my name, but, he, but to see me, he didn't remember me. But uh, no, I, that, that was so I couldn't say we were friends, but you know, we crossed paths. I love time. the street scene. Some, some of the stuff that you don't think of as Neil Adams, you know, we think of Batman and everything, but some of these little moments are so nice. And it, nice inking on there, too, for my money. I've, yeah. I've, I've been going down a deep Neil Adams rabbit hole, like reading a bunch of interviews, all kinds of stuff. So it's all blurring. I, I, I don't think it's in here. Uh, and I forget where I read it, but he was talking about, like, he just had like postcards and stuff from like oh, Calcutta right. yeah. and, and junk like that. And he would just, he would just trace stuff off the Himalayan mountains. He would trace, he had no problem using that artograph projector. That was the technique of the daily strip guys, like Alex oh, Raymond, yeah. Stan Drake's, all of his uh, Connecticut buddies who were doing those daily strips. Right. Uh, Mike Grell, he used one quite a bit. <laughs> he used one quite a bit, one quite a bit on, on uh, over top of drawings stuff. Yes. <laughs> but he always said to it I mean, because there's that drawing that Neil Adams the classic one of him he's leaning forward and he's running and it almost looks like he's running on a beach but my god Mike Grell seemed to have used that drawing <laughs> <laughs> I think Warlord was always running somewhere <laughs> there's um you know, like we've been hearing more and more talk uh, as people wrote about Neil Adams about inking. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you're going to transfer images or you're going to reference images from a postcard or something like that, you do need to sort of uh, do the drawing and the inking, right? Make it your own in yes. that step. And yes. so that's something that I, I, I always think of him as just this great draftsman and sort of photorealism. Once you start thinking like he had this inking style that became like, con, you know, Continuity Studios was, was sort of that. It's the crusty bunkers inker <laughs> inking style but i saw like bill sinkevich writing about that too so you know that that's something i think about a lot when it comes to like how you're using a morgue or reference images but still being able to make it look like it's part yeah. of your world yeah. yeah it's not just copying it it's you're interpreting it and you make it into something because uh, it yeah and he could do it and that <laughs> that jaguar i think it's a jaguar makes me think of I think he did there's a I think it's a Batman where he drew like a, a Great Dane and he put the balls on it you could see <laughs> just the balls and that always stuck in my mind so whenever I draw dogs I'm always sure to put the balls on <laughs> I wonder I wonder how he got away with it because I don't know which comic it is like holy cow Je- so he's, he's drawn the first kind of dick in mainstream comics even if it's a animal dick Jeff, you're going to make me go get my, my uh, lead poisoning 
uh, Jeff Darrow art book and read the <laughs> Steve, read the Steve uh, Gross uh, <laughs> comments in there, man. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, that, that, although he never did that. I, I, I do the buttholes now, but uh, he never did the butthole. But he did do the... Yeah. yeah, what did Steve say? The only thing Jeff Darrow loves more than drawing dog dicks is drawing a dog pooping. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 that's amazing inking, and I feel like that's inking that I don't always see on Neil Adams. You know, like a heavy line rather than a lot of rendering. I feel like this Giordano stroke, man. Like he was real liberal with the super thicks. This kind of gimmick. <laughs> Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comic books that we make in stores right now. Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue one, two, and three are on the stands. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit. Every issue completely self-contained. And you could grab uh, the Anti-Social Network trade paperback, which was uh, 2021's uh, season of Red Room Comics. Jimmy produced Hulk, Grand Design, Monster, and Madness, both in stores right now, where he's taking the entirety of the uh, Incredible Hulk storyline, distilling it down into two 40-page comics, 60 years worth of Incredible Hulk comics uh, in one handy package. Get them while they're hot. Looking for a new way to enjoy your favorite comics and manga? Comixology Unlimited has you covered. With Comixology Unlimited, you get unlimited access to an unrivaled library of over 40,000 digital comics, manga, and graphic novels featuring content from over 125 publishers and thousands of independent creators from around the world. And if that's not enough, you can also save up to 15% when buying select new and current comics. Try Comixology Unlimited today with a free 30-day trial and then just $5.99 a month afterwards. For details, visit Amazon.com slash Comixology Unlimited or click the link below this video. While we're done paying the bills, let's get back to this video. Who do you guys, who did you guys like on, on Neil Adams in terms of anything? Did you have any? Neil himself, and I have more... Um, Giordano than like the Tom Palmer because like that Avenger stuff man that's that's prohibitively expensive I like Palmer um I liked him on Neil Adams and on uh Gene Colan yeah he would bring in a pen line although we're seeing a little bit of that pen line probably in some of this background stuff but I always like that pen line next to a big heavy brush line yeah and I feel like uh Palmer would do that how about that man that idea of just cutting, yeah, cutting cool. a, a face in the facade <laughs> and and Doing a little treatment like that there. Yeah. <laughs> there would be these Batman toys as a kid, <laughs> or it's like Arctic Batman and, <laughs> yes. and Fireman Batman and shit. So, water Batman, underwater Batman. There, the, the Arctic one is white, and it's yes. like, this is the Dark Knight. The Fireman is like construction orange. Jeez. Yeah. In the comic book, there was the Rainbow Batman. Do you remember that? Oh one? yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, I don't know what the story was. I just remember it from a annual. The, 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 because I used to buy the twenty five cent Batman comics of all the old. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that, that was Batman in San Francisco. That that uh, that Rainbow <laughs> Brat Batman. These are great. It's banned in Florida now. Yeah. All of these, I love this sequence with the shadows, the silhouettes. And this would be a piece where, like, you could imagine, like, the reference photo for yeah. for this part. It also reminds me of the 60s Batman TV show. You know, like, so often they're climbing up the side of the building and oh, it's yeah. that ridiculous shot. of Or Sammy Davis Jr. looking down <laughs> or something. You know, this feels like a real update, like, yeah, it's not going to be that easy here. <laughs> I like that Batman's wearing a parka. <laughs> totally, but still keep it like not not. Uh, it must be it's so insulated. It's like a wetsuit, so he doesn't need like a tossle cap or anything. Well, I think Adam West did that once when like when one of the Batman's were uh, Mister Freeze shows up and is like, "How is it you weren't freeze? I was wearing my special bat thermal underwear." But <laughs> well, they could have used it there. You wouldn't have had to wear that part. How about this movement? Really cool, wow. cutting through the gutters. The you got the same gun. Yeah. And this is Batman as 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 uh, as Freddy Krueger, essentially. Man, it reminds me like if you ever read uh, the the first Blood, Dave Morell's first. That's blood, what I was going to say. Rambo is book, John yes. Rambo, because uh, it that book, the way the novel is, it, it's two points of view. You got Rambo's point of view. You got the the yeah. townies' point of view. Uh, yeah. When it's Rambo's point of view, it's like you know, it's a it's a fugitive story when it's the townies point of view it's fucking jason Voorhees. you stick your head up from thickets 
and your friend's going to get sh- his cat peeled back because there's somebody out there right. who's watching your every move and who's going to fucking slit your throat. It's way different. See, That's what this funny because I read that book too, and I read it when it came out before it was a movie. And uh, I remember thinking it, I had seen Jaws. I go, it's fucking Jaws, man. He's he's the fucking shark. I mean, people are going out there and he's getting everybody. It's so good. That's it, a great book. It's man. incredible, man. Yeah. And then they made him write a sequel because he, he doesn't. <laughs> they, he dies in the book. He yeah. does. He does. And then it's just he's on the chain gang. He's like, it don't feels like it's more like. Jaws. Oh, I never read the. I never read the sequel. <laughs> I should, but I liked I liked Morell's work quite a bit. Wow. God, look at that upshot of Batman. My God. Jesus. This is the kind you of know. stuff that I would uh, be like copy as a kid and everything yeah. will be wonky and way off. And then I was like, okay, I, I won't get to draw comics when, when I grow up. And then I ran towards Rob Liefeld. I ran towards Todd McFarlane because those drawings, I could copy them and it still kind of like look like them. Even if the, my shit was wonky, their shit was wonky. So it didn't exactly matter. But this just felt so solid. When you try to copy that and you get it wrong, it looks really oh. wrong. Yeah, I, I used to try to copy Frazetta paintings in pencil, and I could never understand why they look. They don't look anything like the paintings. I don't get it. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out that it was the paint that was adding something that I could <laughs> not reproduce in line. <laughs> I bet you learned some things along the way doing that, though, man. Learn not to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> My ego's fragile enough. <laughs> Look at Robin, man. This is perpetual hostage. The lowest <laughs> lane of Batman comics. <laughs> <laughs> or Jimmy Olsen, depending on. Wow. That that's that shot of him. Yeah. That's powerful. That 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 lighting. Like brain. Yeah. still yeah. adhering to the lighting with the with the planes of the cheek. And it's like uh you know, it's the light there. You got the dark right there to kind of really sell it. Mm. Just a little pointy bone. Like, just, oh. It's the bone points, man. He knows it. Did you ever see, did you ever see that? Did you ever see any of his Ben? Do you know who Ben Casey is? Yeah. Did you ever see his, his comic strip? Oh. Yeah. It, uh, was there ever a suitable collection of that stuff? No, no, I used to get it. There was a thing called the Menominee's Falls Gazette, and they would just print newspaper strips. And they they reprinted it in there, and I had those. And I, at the time, I knew who you know who, who Neil Adams was. I go, what is he going to like? Why would he want to do? <laughs> Why wasn't he doing superhero comics at this point? Because <laughs> I looked just like the, all the actors looked just like the guys on TV. Nobody outside of guys in Mad Comics, you know, Drucker and Davis and those guys could draw, and you knew who the who the actor was. Highly referenced stuff too. Like uh, he was given a tour of his studio a couple of years back. It's a, it's a video online, and and he has some of his uh, Ben Casey sh- strips up on on the walls in continuity. And he was like, I used photos for every single frame in this strip. So don't let you know anybody tell you not to use photo reference. It, it was like an interior, like it was for drawing. You know, it's a daily strip. It's an interior of a diner that looks super solid. It's a waist down shot of two figures and one maybe picking another's pocket and two other like complex images that like for a day's work, it's pretty tough. Yeah. I wonder, because I wonder how many pictures, I wonder if, uh, looking at it again, if you'd see that he kept using the same pictures over and over. Like the Al Williamson uh, Star Wars joints. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same Alec Guinness face. Man, I always say Pete Morisi with the airplane. He has one airplane <laughs> photo. He must have got out of an ad or something that appears in, man, six or eight times in his work. How about that, man? Punching him right on the bingo button. Yeah, yeah that's great. Heading up into the air. Like yeah. And you see the direction, right? Totally horizontal, totally vertical. <laughs> Rock'em, like, sock'em robots. Max, those are knockout punches. God, and then look at the use of the cape on that next page. Holy cow. Yeah, for the final, the final one, man. Oh. You know what Mike Tyson says, man, is... You don't try to hit the the uh, the jaw, the chin solid. You just want to barely glance it and just keep your momentum going, and it'll just rearrange that jaw. If you hit it solid, it might not fully crack, but like if you just glance the tip of that jaw, it should send that jaw to the back of your neck. That's terrifying. <laughs> you know what else is great here is the choreography. Yeah. Right punch, yeah. left punch, right punch. Yeah. And it's a spread. 
I always try to think of that like uh, same with like walking motion, you know, if the right foot's forward, the yeah, left foot forward yeah. in the next panel. Yeah, great lighting on on our guys right there. <laughs> yeah, a little sugar. <laughs> Look at how simple that is for a page. It's an awesome page. Like every one of those panels, you get to see Neil Adams' drawing ability on display, but also super simple. Yeah. You know, like you can almost see a generation or two later of the image guys where it's like, yeah, put put the cool figure on the page, put the cool close up on the page. I was thinking of those like last pages that Art Adams would draw in like the 80s when it was like, uh oh, we're on page 64. I, I was supposed to deliver that could this. Be too. I don't know. <laughs> I was supposed to deliver this three weeks ago. Let me draw that Loki real quick. Yeah, man, looks like he's worried that Robin might see him getting. You know. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be good to have Robin like over his shoulder back here, giving him the evil eye. One <laughs> those little lines coming off his head, like <laughs> you know, red, like he's he's he's, he's jealous, <laughs> and we don't know what. This is our Ir Irv Novik stuff, yeah. and it's, it's super an competent. Problem. Yeah, yeah, it is. I did it's not just, realize that when I was reading through this. Um, it's so interesting to have that clarified. Yeah. Because there's some good stuff. Yeah, and isn't it Nor uh, Novik is the guy that, I think he was one of the guys that uh, Warhol copied. Oh, shit, I don't know that. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I like, like there's several panels and in, in drawings in this that I like. Yeah, like like I feel like there's some influence for sure. Like uh, is, is Giordano ink in these? I'm not sure mm -hmm. who the inker is on this. Because it has, a, it has a bit of that, yeah. That would make sense. I feel like that's one of those moves to try to keep, like, we've got two pencilers, yeah, yeah. but we want it to look yeah. on model. and, and The and, Klaus Janssen Daredevil model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is such a ridiculous moment because he's falling and Batman <laughs> is like, uh, walks away, catches him in a, in a window further down. <laughs> and does it all, yeah, once again, means Jason Voorhees. And, and it's all with the MacGuffin of, look, I saved you. Now you have to pledge your whole life right. to me. Now poor Ling is between a rock and a hard place, man. He's got a, a pledge fealty to Raz al Ghul and Batman. Should have thought of that before he embarked on his life of crime. Man, he moved pretty fast to get down that stairway. You know? <laughs> maybe, maybe he took the elevator just happened to be there. The bat elevator? And then to get, and then to get into that room... <laughs> I like this move for uh, yeah. we're gonna have a we're gonna have a knife fight. My arms need to be free, and it's like tuck the cape in behind. Um, yeah. You know that's a really cool visual, right? It's, totally. It's, it's a little bit weird, but it makes sense if you're like, okay, let's let's fight. Let's get those look arms. Look at the free. guy leaning. Look at the bottle of the guy leaning up against the the. the like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, you know this this speaks to like there was that that spawn cover right where he's crouched down it's like that spider-man one joint but he's standing on the cape and everybody's mm -hmm. like well how's he gonna stand up <laughs> that's right <laughs> uh different color on that leg uh, like a uh, color miscue yeah. Yeah. little 25 percent off yeah some screen fell off or something now yeah. see these are quintessential like neil adams colors man like we were approaching continuity studios type color even though this is still just mechanical four color printing like these tones Those are faces. so warm that's a really great panel though again like as a fan looking at it it's such an interesting thing to see ling going through these different motions yeah isn't, yeah. isn't, this, isn't this kind of a gypsy uh, fight technique here the the, the I, just, I think i've seen these in westerns where they have the you know they've, they've, they've got a bowie knife and their hands are tied with the with a scarf and they uh makes for a good panel though yeah, it does. Just, it's just like, I just wonder the thinking of it. We got this martial arts sequence <laughs> going on. <laughs> when you see a bunch of yeah. these uh, faces, it makes me wonder, Jeff, uh, you recognize this guy in the Fairburn system uh, books by any chance? I don't. I never. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't use the heads the head book so much. I've got it, but uh, I know I know Frank has. <laughs> I, was oh, yeah. Thinking, yeah. I was kind of surprised. I'm going to change that head a little bit. Cause, cause anyway. You can always tell when he uses it. Yeah. Like the little old lady in uh, Sin City. Where's that guy in Electra Sass? In the, oh, yeah. In the cell. And he's, he's this uh, Asian gentleman, I think. Oh, yeah. That was, uh, I remember going to Kagan McLeod's house. Man, his dad had all those books and he, he inherited them. And he was like, who's this guy? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's the old, uh, it's the Asian dude. There it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> go find the ling. There you go. It's easy. <laughs> Here's your choreography, man. This is the stuff that that would. Uh... Oh yeah, there's it? our guy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there's our dude, man. Hey, Je- hey, hey Jeff, while we're here, while we're like while you have that open, uh, yeah. can, can you show the f- like he's got like a concerned face like that that same he, it's like a his eyes are because that's like one of the exact uh, yeah, ones yeah. that that people will be blown away by. The mouth is kind of back in a rictus kind of. Is it, uh, you t- tell me when I, if I. Uh, none of those. No, it's more. Uh, his mouth is open in uh might be on another page. Yeah. I bet it's I'll a very nice. Page. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Watch I'm gonna hear I'm gonna hear about this. <laughs> what all the secrets? <laughs> Frank wasn't very happy that you <laughs> <laughs> What? Huh? I said what? Was that for a nine panel grid, Jimmy? Yeah, it's that that's an interesting one. I like watching him do grids that are a little bit off. Yes. You know, even this for a six panel well, grid. Well, maybe you can explain it. I don't understand that. I don't understand that when you guys talk about grids, I really don't know what, what you mean. <laughs> well, just like the Kirby or Ditko nine or six or. So you, know, you like mean that, like that? Okay. Like so that's that, a nine, so, but. So this, so, and that, then that would be the, those panels, just two of them put together. Yeah. Right. Okay. You see it in Watchmen a lot, you know, where it's like that's all that nine panel grid, but there are those pages where it's like maybe it'll be a full tier, you know, three panels together, stuff like that. See, I'm, I'm an idiot. I just. <laughs> you know, like I, I would look at this and say that's six panel grid, even yeah. though it's not ruled out to be exactly six squares. But if you drew the six squares, it'd be like, yep, that's contained, that's contained. And then this is like two together. Yeah, yeah here we go, man. <laughs> There, there it is. That face right there, that one right there in the middle. Like that's <laughs> Frank uses that one. <laughs> there <we> go. <laughs> and I'm not. That's no condemnation. Like, like I'll show that picture off, and 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 put a couple of those photos next to the drawings that he used. And I think it's cool. And he does enough cartooning on top of it. It's not tracing. Yeah. No, it's not. But it's just like varying your faces if you can't come up with it in your head this disguise that they keep like passing around yeah and they're like <laughs> seems so ridiculous robin is that dude sometimes uh-huh. and then batman it's like i don't even remember that part also by the way like if you want to draw if you want to write a detective story all you have to do to make him a detective is make sure that whatever piece of evidence he finds is only available in one place on the globe oh here's this leaf <laughs> <laughs> and this leaf is used in special <laughs> rituals only by one cult called the Brotherhood of the Demon. So I have to go to Calcutta now. That happens three times in his story. This is great because he's peeling off the cost the the mask, and underneath he's wearing the Robin mask <laughs> <laughs> under his makeup. It really is Super Friends, man. <laughs> or Scooby Doo. Yeah. <laughs> and what is the smoke stuff? You think? Oh, I don't oh know. this inflatable body stocking. Oh. <laughs> oh, so that he has a man's physique. Yeah, he has the Hulk up muscles. <laughs> but this beautiful artwork. Yes, yes, absolutely. Really lose sight of the, the the reason for this. I mean, I, I I don't know who wrote these, but man, I mean, the, the artwork was just. I mean, like I say, I, I I looked at the drawings. I didn't really, you know, pay much attention to the stories. This, the foreshortening is something special because it really does answer the question, like, what would Kirby's foreshortening look like if, if, if you paid attention to anatomy a little stronger? Look at how this works almost as like a, yeah, like a DeLuca yeah. effect, repeating yeah. that fist. That's, that's almost a tangent, mm-hmm. but it works really well, I think. Right? Yeah. Like, that's cool looking. I would, I would steal something like that because I think you could do something with it. And, and he kind of does, you know, like, I think that's a good effect. Gosh, it's so amazing when you think that when you look at the, this character you know, on, 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 uh, on the, the left-hand page, the, yeah, the next to him, the, him, the coloring on him is like, wow, what they used to do. Oh, yeah. 
You're not going to be able to tell that he's an Asian unless we, gee, yeah, man. From different times. Wow. See, it's more of those what I call continuity studios colors because you just did not see those in an average Marvel DC comics. You can see why he would want them. You know, they're more muted, uh -huh. like for a background. Same with that green, that olivey green that we see sometimes. And look at this is like a 25% magenta, just the faintest. Yeah, almost the 25% yellow. It is too. a 25% yellow. Absolutely. That's a color, no doubt. 25%. Uh, cyan on that because we're in uh, the Alps we're in the, the the cold and it's pastel in the cold yeah, these faces are so beautiful they really are but it's also like it feels like the best of the daily strip guys like like uh, Kelly Green is that Kelly Green? Stan Drake yes the yeah. Stan Drake yeah. kind of uh, it makes sense that Neil Adams would be called out in that uh, Dave Sim uh, mm -hmm. Alex Raymond book. Oh, really? Huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Probably for like you know Bat Masterson and Ben Casey work and using the 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 Kodak Instamatic and all that kind of shit. He did bet. He did Bat Masterson. He he was like an assistant before Ben uh -huh. Casey, Howard uh -huh. Nostrom, I've, I think. Oh yeah. yeah. Howard I feel like this is kind of interesting considering Thrill Kill. Yeah. Seeing is that Paul Kirshner <laughs> with a buzz cut? Reusing those Polaroids. <laughs> this I know little... that I know... Amazing. Go, go ahead, Jeff. No, I was just going to say, I know that I think when Gary Gianni, he took over Prince Valiant, he got from uh, John Cullen Murphy a lot of a lot of the, the photos and stuff that he, he used when he was, was doing this trip. That's so I, don't cool. know if, I, don't, I don't know how Foster did. But, um, I don't know, and Al Williamson, I know that he had quite the picture file, too. <laughs> yeah, the cool thing in, in these uh, EC books behind me is uh, a lot of that stuff is, is, well, some of that stuff is reprinted as, as back matter in between issues. And you could see Al Williamson and mm -hmm. Frank Frazetta fencing yes, and stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. That that pick on the, on the, on the right-hand side, that that. The, the character on the left, yeah, you're right there. Right, no, no, no. There, that one. The, the gesture on that figure is like, that's fantastic. It's so, you know, he could have just had his arm at his side, but he's like, you know, he's doing a little bit of a stretch and he's looking and it's so, it gives character. You know, you just, you, you'd never see stuff like that in comics. You'd everybody would just be standing there like, like they're doing Hanna Barbera cartoons with their arms at their side and they're not like, okay. That foreshortened um, arm too, where oh, where the yeah, light is coming elbow. down. Like yeah. like if you were just to trace this off on a piece of paper, it would just look like a little noodle or something. Yeah. But yeah. the accurate drapery, the yeah, light the up top, dual, the folds coming off the elbow, which is the bone point, which is where the fabric would be pulling from. Fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. I was looking at this shoe and thinking like this crust oh. up s snow on your on the sole of your shoe. You can see like it's kind of uh, blobby. Yeah. Ink line around it. Yeah. Yeah. Like a snowy version of the freaking Jack Davis mud. soldier with yes. the mud gimmicks all over <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Totally. And the boot and the boot. It's so well drawn. There's no there's no guesswork. He's got the sole. He's got the heel and the sole is separate from the from the heel. It's just yeah. Very much shapes too. Once you start going in and looking closely at some of the ink marks, they're not they're inconsequential. Like it's that shape is really what sells that that shoe so well. That's a great hardest, pose all around. One of the hardest things to draw when you're drawing like shoes or feet is is a foot that's pointing straight at you. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, sometimes it just if you draw, it just looks like the bottom of a baseball bat or something. Like, <laughs> how do you? They're just like a little line, and I, I actually I picked up doing it from a drawing that that uh, Giraud did of Blueberry, where he's standing there, one foot is in, in, in the side, and the other was stri straight out at you. There, oh, that's how you do it. Because there's also the subtlety of like the tip of the shoe isn't touching the ground; it's up a little bit. So, yeah. so depending on yeah, the perspective, yeah, you yeah, have to draw that yeah. part up a bit yeah. touch. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's helpful. Yeah, it at least gives your little weird wedge yeah. something. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, it doesn't just look like a club down there. It's like, uh, as, as, as lost in a motorcycle accident. I, I have a memory of, of like 
honest to goodness, three or four years old drawing. And I, uh, I traced a toy and I was good. So I traced the outer edge and then I'm now going to draw it. And I remember being faced with my very first drawing challenge of how do you draw a nose? And I remember like, I, I like the paper, the, the pencil touched the paper and I went like that. And I'm like, how am I supposed to draw this thing that's sticking? Like, how do you do that? And I literally remember like next time watching Scooby-Doo and like paying attention to like Fred and Wilma's face and how they did it. And then after that, like I realized like, oh, the teeth is just like a white strip. And then you put a little white in the eyes. Like I just like, it's my <laughs> earliest like drawing memory where I'm like, I have to solve a problem. Well, well I thought that because uh, I had a, I had G.I. Joe's, but I had like, you know, the the real G.I. Joe, the action figure, the, you know. The, the Barbie doll. Yeah, you know, well. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, Ed. Anyway, anyway, but I would take, I'd, I'd take it. What if I, I take the figure and I lay it on the paper and I take my pencil and I just trace around it and then I just have to fill in this stuff because I couldn't figure out how to draw it. It was like, yeah, it was pretty fun. <laughs> why doesn't it work i don't get it <laughs> that's exactly what i did man it was an egon action figure from ghostbusters that i used couldn't get the nose though oh is that a barbie figure too <laughs> <laughs> the uh the the gi joe the the big uh, gi joe like uh it has a um the thumbnail is on the inside i think it's like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. it's like a weird flaw and then that, that figure, his hand, his hand is like this. It's yeah. So he can hold the gun, and it really kind of bothered me because he couldn't do it for any, he couldn't throw a punch because he he can poke guys in the eye. He used to play it. But my GI Joe at one point was Batman. He was the Green Hornet. He was, uh, uh, you know, I, anyway. Yeah. Did you have those Mig Mego figures or? No, I was I, I was I was way too old by then. I remember Captain Action came out. Just about as on the cusp of being too old to play with those things. And I was like, oh, this is so sad. And they had Spider Man the following year, and I, I decided I got to give up playing with these things. I'm, too, you know, I'm, I'm 21, and I can't know. I don't know how I was, like maybe 12. And I thought, I'm going into high school, and I don't think high school kids are supposed to be playing with. Yeah, I had you know, that moment, man, with uh, Power Rangers. You know, well, I was too old to, to be grabbing those toys, man. But I like think your brother. Man. Yeah, there's there's great stuff on here, F from figure running towards us to figure running away, and then I love this, like the wind up of the leg and the leg straight. Boom. So powerful. It's so powerful. <laughs> Is that like the camera facing our guy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's so good. I don't know, but man, if he would land a, a blow with that wrench, he'd win that fight. You're done. You're done. Wow. Good storytelling. Exactly. Wrench being separated from his hand. Need that to happen. He was so great at drawing guys, flying through the air and kicking somebody. He did some like deadly hands of kung fu covers. Oh, that yeah. were, like, you know, one of Bruce Lee that from Enter the Dragons, like, oh my God, one of Billy Jack that is just amazing. And jumping up and kicking Bill, this guy. Bill Sienkiewicz owned, I think he owns that piece. And like oh, he brought it out and was writing about it. Um, Doc Martin oh. dies. Yeah. Oh, really? Doc oh, Martin yeah. dies, and they and uh, he said like you know he keeps them in the dark, deep in the in the flat <laughs> file, so that they barely ever touch the light, because because that that light will just eat up those dyes. Well, I've got I've got a couple of Gil Kane things, and he used what uh, flares, which were like magic markers, and, and and those things they turn brown after a while, and they start to fade. And those yeah, you can't take them out. They, 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 it, the line, the black turns almost into a sepia color. We've seen some Toth uh, fl flare pen joints uh, that uh, it just turned like a fat. It, it, the line gets fatter, and it was yeah. like a it was like a blue. Mm. Yeah, I've got I've got you know, I used to use those all the time too. And I, I've got I've got one piece of it. And it's, it's held up maybe because I I've got was it that was it that piece you showed me, Jeff? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so cool, are, man. Those are flares. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pre pre comic wow. book Jeff Darrow piece, man. There you go, my Bon Bode days. Yeah. Wow. Oh. <laughs> wow. See the drapery on that. Him like rising out of that 
Jeez, what kind of stuff? It's like the Lincoln Memorial or something. <laughs> Yeah, it's sick, oh. and just the 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 boldness of of allowing such th- these thick blacks, man. This whole spread feels. I'm I'm surprised you do this in a comic in the yeah. back in the day because it is like the payoff is there, but also like I don't know, man. It feels like a lot of space, a lot of real estate for that kind of payoff. That feels like forward yeah. storytelling. Yeah. And then you get just this. Like, I wonder if this was in the issue. Yeah, I wonder too. That feels like it could have been. Well, some kind of weird blow up or something. Yeah, something seems off. These things are a great set piece for an action story. Yeah. Look, yeah, all of this, gonna... like his madman running down towards them. Pretty fun. I got a shirt in the snow. <laughs> yeah, because he's a badass, man. He could just regenerate in his little pit. So, Jimmy, you read this, right? Mm-hmm. Like, does he when he gets regenerated he like he like loses his mental faculties for a minute yeah he's like a berserker wolverine yeah i see or doctor who maybe a little <laughs> right the way he builds these figures it's fantastic you know we were talking about back muscles on some other stuff we were looking at but it's almost all we talk about <laughs> <laughs> he hurts ling one one punch and they talk once they get this sorted out they're like Ling has broken bones, internal bleeding. <laughs> he needs a hospital. And Batman gives him everything he's got, like the wind up with that right hand. Doesn't Unless work. Unless he studied Iron Body Kung Fu. <laughs> wow. Great action, great choreography. God, and that, that last shot of him, Batman laying there, the draper in that cape, for God's sake. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you wonder if that's a move Neil Adams figured out, like. Because you could mock up folds pretty easily. You know what I mean? Like you, some of this stuff's really extraordinary and it might be hard to get a good shot. But you could do folds. You know, you could have somebody lay down. You could throw a pillow down and have your sheet go over it just to get that reference because it does sell all the physics. Yeah. But the fabric is so fluid. I mean, if it was a sheet, I don't know where it would lay like that because there's a little stiffness to a sheet. It looks like she's like, like silk. Yeah, yeah, a little bath towel or something. There was that that in that Thrill Kill comic when he was using that Kirshner dude. You said he was like posing with a uh, with a broom um, umbrella, an umbrella as the as a rifle. That's right. Wow. I wonder if that girl's supposed to be Jill St. John. She looks like this actress, Jill St. John. He would definitely do that, right? Like like model characters off of certain people. Ra's al Ghul feels so specific. I wonder, if, like, I was thinking, yeah. like, Peter Cushing with, like, some catfish joints. On that great, that, that great plane. He could, but he could, like, he could do vehicles, too. You'd have guys that could, you know, draw figures and, go, and then they'd do the machines and be eh, kind of funky, and but he could draw everything. Monsters and uh, dinosaurs and just anything oh. that's really nice talking about like the fold of the uh, cape mm-hmm. even going over like the foot behind him i love i'm looking at the lighting on that neck muscle it's a good neck right there and the pose the gesture of this girl is great this has to come from something sure sure you know that's no that's doubt it. so now this is where the arctic batman could have come into uh, <laughs> Yeah. That, that outfit <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun though that batman's just like full-on olympic skiing and then, <laughs> then it would have been uh batman canon at that point if they'd use the old arctic batman wow such a crazy piece of the story like throw the ski pool in the, the propeller the and have it spit right back out at you look at how much it, it goes like uh you know the direction totally. is is all there. Yeah. Totally. Jeff, do you think about directional devices and stuff whenever you're drawing? You know, like leading the reader's eyes through a page, or uh, no. But sometimes I, I I think of the direction in terms of where the character is going. I always draw my char- the main character is always going from left to right towards the end. Of, he's always going towards the end of the book. I hardly ever reverse his acts where he's facing the other. It happens, but I generally, I don't know what I have this thing about. Well, yeah, they should. He should lead the reader to the 
ended so we can get out of this comic as fast as quick <laughs> as possible. But I was having me yeah, walking to the to the right. But I I think I do maybe. But if I do do it's in, it's inadvertent. It's sheer sheer luck. I feel like that helps the reading experience of just the left to right motion. It, just, it does. I'm just too dumb to think of it. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> too busy thinking about drawing a where can I fit a dog pooping into this, <laughs> this surgery scene? <laughs> How did that dog get in here? How about a camel? It's or a half dozen of them. Yeah. This is one of your international detective moments, I believe, Ed. <laughs> find some decoration of a cam- camel yeah. harness. Or some, or a camel's some, bridle. <laughs> and I recall some, that the whole... some camel, camel dung on the bottom of someone's shoe. And it's, that's only to erase a camel found in the, uh, the uh, Viceroy Mountains. <laughs> We're getting a cigarette reference, a couple of them. There it is, man. I recall that the only tribesmen from this area decorate their their animals gear with beadwork <laughs> i mean that, that ain't far from adam west when you really get down oh, yeah, to the reading part say, of it. yeah that, that is yeah they put it into the bat computer and then now then here <laughs> wow look at the silhouettes here jeff we've yeah. talked about i love silhouettes and i love that you do the silhouettes on your end pages like in your comics this feels like really strong silhouettes of the uh mm-hmm. of, of like the camels and and that's so cool looking right yeah god, look look at batman with his shirt off my god look at he's so buff i mean he's so <laughs> fucking strong and he looks real but he looks like a like monstrous like he could just break anybody in half like a toothpick i feel like it was that controversial cover too for this one man where he's like got the hairy ass chest and i think oh, he we're gonna some, see some, some, yeah, hairy some, chest some batman you know what's great on this though is he looks athletic too you know, like sometimes yeah, the guys yeah, are just yeah. giant bodybuilders and it's kind of like good luck fighting. Yeah. Like, like you can barely lift your arm over your head because of the muscles. Yeah. That looks yeah. like a like a guy that's in shape for for uh, movement. I mean, I, I Jim and I were talking the other day and I mentioned that it really bothered me that he that that he had a hairy chest. It didn't bother me. It was just I'd never seen hair on the chest of, of, a, of a superhero. And and it just it's like at the time it just made me it made him sexual to me. It was like I don't, I don't know why, but but uh it just wow, no one had ever dared to do that before. He was always whenever you'd see anybody, they're always just, you know, like they just you know, man man groomed or whatever that, that word is that they use. But holy cow. Yeah, I think wow. I think I think the oh, nipples were a masculine conversation also, like with editorial. Julie Schwartz might not have been about it. Love that he's doing double double lighting while we're uh, while we're showing off the topless Batman. Yeah, it's not enough that he's topless. Like we really got to hit that with some light. That's a thing too, man. Like people, like guys. It seems like they figure out how to double light a face first, and like doing all these other shapes that that gets more dicey. And there are guys who could do it well, and there are guys who just can't. Obviously, and that kiss. That is, that is so sec. That is so for, passionate. For a yeah, and I mean, you did You know, Bruce Wayne, the Playboy. That really sells him. Yeah, he is. He 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 was getting some. Yeah. Look at the inking on he her pants. He wasn't, he wasn't celibate, you know. And she's really grinding up against the uh, the old bat cave there. <laughs> How about that blow? Like you don't you don't see the point of impact, but you know it's going down. Yeah, and and he's out, and it's like, all right, now onto the daughter. Yeah, and the lines of the body look right from the buttocks all the way up. That, that beautiful drawing, and it, and it leads you into that punch. Wow. Yeah, the tense of the he's he's throwing his whole body weight. He's tensing his whole body into that that one punch. That's the other thing too. He doesn't draw the muscles like striations all the time. Like when the when the character's uh-huh. chilling out, like those yeah. muscles are not flexed. Yeah. Then we got our final piece, man. And the the, the camels are leaving too. Why didn't they? Why didn't they grab one of those camels? <laughs> I like that he's hauling his cape. You know, in, in his 60s, hand. In the sixties, you would have had a bat camel. Yeah. <laughs> there it is, dude. The hairy oh, chest. Holy cow! Heck just, of a cover. Yeah, and in the other one too, the the action and the. 
I wonder what I can't remember what year this came out. Mm, Seventy-two. Uh, well, yeah, I was, I was curious with the martial arts. I would have been right in the middle of the whole, you know, uh, kung fu craze. Was this ever published, Superman versus Wonder Woman? In like, I guess in one of these oversized, right? Is that? How, how I, I never. I bought most of them. I didn't see that one. Yeah, I don't remember that. This is the cool thing right yes. here, man. Oh, like where no. you get no. the main image. I'd like to see the 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 cover to like it, it is. I feel like there's more work done on it. Yeah, this is a rough. Yeah, this is a this is like a rough. You can see certainly the background, but I think even like. You know the gloves and stuff it's roughed in and the color makes it look a little bit more finished right but i think that's all a rough yeah yeah it's fascinating like there's a joe kubert version of this oh start. yeah 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 it, it was neat yeah yeah but, but i can understand because i mean he drew a beautiful Muhammad Ali. i mean whew. yeah i mean you can't sneeze at that no adams plus plus all those recognizable characters in the background and stuff yeah, one of the I great wonder, covers. I wonder, I, wonder, I wonder if they had some sort of thing like that in order to can can I get on the cover of that or because I remember they that did, I think they had a little they have a little like a guide to who was who in there. I think Jeanette Kahn's in there and uh, yeah, like Archie Goodwin will be in there right next to uh, Trevor Von Eden's who, in it, and he's young. He looks really young. He's like fun. a kid. <laughs> well, I wonder wonder what ever happened to him. Yeah, he's around. Is he? Hmm. Yeah, I think he's on Facebook. There it is, man. The, the some some of the classic Batman stuff. Yeah. Neil Adams. Rest Save in peace. Savior Batman. Yeah. Rest in peace, Jeff. Um, uh, when is the new uh, Shaolin Cowboy coming out? Wednesday, I think the eighteenth is the day. Next week. And it's going to be coming out. When it comes out. And it's going to be coming out on a monthly basis. For the action uh, pack. More than a half a year, man. Seven months. Can't wait. Jimmy and I did variant covers for a couple of issues, so you got a double dip on those. That's suckers. right. <laughs> and there's quite as as it goes on, you'll get you'll get your fill of pooping dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's an extravaganza towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. This is stuff that you drew during COVID time. Yeah, nothing else to do out in the middle of nowhere in France. Yeah, fantastic. You know, like there, there are all these movies coming out from that were shot in like 2020, uh, and they're all single person in the woods, <laughs> like in a cabin all by themselves, uh, with potential ghosts around. And uh, all of our COVID works are coming out now, man. It's pretty cool. Yes, takes a long time to make comics these days. Uh, Jimmy, you want to give us some marching orders? We'll be on our way. Read more comics. <laughs>